You ever stop and think, why is it that some golfers get a pass and other golfers get trashed? Let's talk about that. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Hopefully, I'm, I'm doing some of that. But what I was talking about in the beginning is if you're watching golf on TV or if you're just watching a swing analysis, maybe you pulled up something on YouTube and you're listening to the commentators, the talking heads, talking about somebody's swing. And that swing is a little bit idiosyncratic. It's got a few little quirks in it. Maybe it doesn't look like the textbook swing. And the things that they have to say about those swings are pretty interesting. I'm going to try and do a couple of golf swing impressions for you. We're going to start out with a shout out to Rick Shields. If you've seen Rick Shields, maybe you've paid attention to this, maybe you haven't. But in the beginning, almost in the takeaway, he goes ahead and sets his wrists really early. He sets them early and then carries it to the top. And from here, he really tries to turn his hips and drop his hands on the inside and really fire at the golf ball. And in so doing, he kind of lifts up off the ground and gets just the slightest bit of early extension. But he's able to play some really good golf because of his athleticism. Let's, let's give it a shot here. All right, let's set the wrist early and drive down the line. All right. Well, that, that worked pretty well. <laughs> A uh, carry of about 175 yards with a 7 iron. That's not too bad. Yeah, 178 total. All right, so maybe I'm a far cry from Rick Shields with my golfing prowess, the way I look, and quite honestly, my YouTube size. But anyway, the point is, is that Rick Shields is a teaching pro. He started out as a teaching pro, and he's still what I would consider to be a really good golfer, even though nowadays he doesn't have as much time to devote to his game. But even with his knowledge of the golf swing, he still has some things in his swing that are not textbook perfect. They, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. He has learned to play with what he has. He's actually got a lot of really good things going on in his swing. There's just a few things that if he was on NBC or CBS or one of the TV shows, they would probably pick these things out and say, wow, look at this. This was a great move. He really drops his hands to the inside and gets down and through the golf ball. Whereas if we were on the lesson tee, they would say, well, you know what? Your hands are kind of out of position. You're setting your wrists way too early. You're dropping it from the inside. You've got early extension. You're really firing too hard at the ball. I mean, they would just pick it apart, right? Let's try another one. Let's try uh, Jim Furyk. I may have bitten way more than I can chew here with Jim Furyk. This is really hard. Okay, Jim Furyk gets really close to the ball. He lifts his hands up almost vertical, takes the club to the outside, gets the elbow flying, and then really drops it back. The club head gets way inside. All right, get close to the golf ball. Oh my God, I hit that fat, but it's fairly straight. It's fairly straight. It's short. I didn't hit that one great to be honest, but you could see how crazy that swing was, right? Now about right now, you're probably thinking, okay, I know this video, we're gonna point out a bunch of outliers, a bunch of just really anomalies anomalous swings in the game of golf that just so happen to work when they shouldn't. It's not something you should teach. And, and I agree. I don't think anybody would teach Jim Furyk's swing. I don't know that anybody would teach Bubba Watson's swing. But anyway, I don't, I don't want to get off track. The point I'm trying to make is, is that when Jim Furyk's on TV or on a YouTube channel, Golf Coaches channel, the, the people talk about him and say, well, he's special. He has special gifts. This this is not a swing you would teach. This is not something you want to copy. He's able to make it work because he's special. So he gets a pass. But some Joe Smith shows up at your, your club and goes in for a lesson and he's got a swing like Jim Furyk. What's going to happen? They're going to get torn apart. Jim Furyk was torn, torn apart. In the beginning of his career, everybody's like, hey, Maybe you need to change this, this swing. You know, when he was starting out and he was starting to get good, it's like, hey, we need to get you fixed, man. You're never going to be able to go on tour with that swing. One of the greatest golfers who ever lived, <laughs> right? So why do some people get a pass and then others get picked apart and we try to fix them? And then there's Lee Trevino as another example. Lee Trevino stood way open. He'd get in here. He'd make a thousand moves. He'd spin his club. He'd walk around. He'd be talking during his swing. And he'd stand up and he'd take it way to the outside, 
and then fire through and, and let the club stay way behind and turn his whole body through. Let's see. Let's do, let's try Trevino. It's not even going to register. It's not even going to register. That was a great swing. Hell, that time even the damn Garmin was trying to tell me that there was a problem with that swing. I swear I get no respect. That was a great swing. That was great contact. I don't know why it misread it, but trust me, that was a moon rocket. That was blasting off like a Scud missile. So Lee Trevino, again, one of the all-time greats, one of the greatest golfers and my favorite golfer of all time, Lee Trevino. He is my favorite to watch by far, period, end of story. But Lee gets a pass. He's got this crazy swing that if we went out on the range and we had a lesson with somebody, they would try to fix that. They would tell us that we were broken. They would tell us that that swing is not going to be consistent. It's not going to work. You might get lucky sometimes and hit some decent shots, but that's no way to build a swing. But when you hear the commentators talking about Lee Trevino, they're talking about all of the great things that he does and how incredible and amazing he is. And again, Lee Trevino is another one of those that gets a pass while the rest of us get trashed. So somebody watching this video may come out and have the thought that, yeah, well, these players that you're pointing out, they're greats. And since they're greats, that's why they get a pass. And a lot of us average Joes who are struggling with the game, we get trashed. That's the reason is because they've got a great career and they're great golfers. So their swing can be whatever it wants to be, but they didn't start out as great. They started out just like you and me. They started out the same way. They started out at zero. They, they may have had what some people would call a God-given talent, and it's hard to argue against that, but they started out never having touched a golf club and never having touched a golf ball. Lee Trevino, down in Dallas, Texas, was hitting golf balls off of hard pan clay dirt, and he had probably garbage clubs and garbage golf balls. He didn't have any lessons, and he had nobody to help him out. He just had to figure it out. And how did he figure it out? He started trying to hit the golf ball, and when he saw a flight that was better, he was like, oh, I must have done something better there. I like that. That went further. That went higher. That stayed straighter. Whatever it was, he started to develop it based off of feedback from the ball flight, not trying to figure out how to make his swing look like some textbook Hideki Matsuyama. All right, so after probably the world's worst Hideki Matsuyama impression that anybody's ever seen, but you, you get the point. I think he's got a textbook swing pretty much that a lot of instructors or analysts would look at and say, yeah, this is really sound. However, at the top, this guy can go and probably grab a beer with his buddies, eat a half a sandwich, go to the bathroom, and come back and finish his swing. I mean, he's got a very long pause at the top. So at the end of it, what am I trying to say with this video? You might be asking yourself the question, okay, smart guy, if we need to improve at golf and we're not getting the ball flights that we want, what are we supposed to do? And to that, I would say this, I'm not trying to bash any PGA instructors. I'm not trying to bash any methods that are out there. God knows I've tried a ton of methods and approaches to the game. What I am saying is that the ball flight, the end result, the product, what we're producing, that should be our biggest teacher. Is it fairly straight? Is it fairly long? Is it pretty much going toward the target consistently? Is it a pretty good ball flight? If, if all of those boxes get ticked, then what the swing looks like and how we get there, it's kind of irrelevant. I'm going to wrap this video up by saying this. Uh, we are all individuals. There will never be another me. There will never be another you. It's not going to happen. Golf swings are just like that. There will never be two that are the same. Trying to be like somebody else, trying to model yourself after somebody else rather than, than trying to find it for you. You're always going to be disappointed. You're always going to be disappointed because you're chasing something that is not possible. At the end of the day, before laser beams, before all of this over analysis in the golf game that is so predominant, the ball flight was the ultimate teacher. If the ball flew better this time than it did the time before, you were onto something. 
You were headed down a better path. You were headed one step closer to playing better golf. That was the ultimate teacher. We need to get back to that. It's really simple to put club on ball. We just need to figure out how to do that better for ourselves. Until next time, leave me a thumbs up if you liked the video, if you found it to be helpful. Give me some comments down below. I'll see you in the next video.